Hi, I'm Angela Busby. I'm a trainer here at Stuller, and on this segment of How It Works, we're gonna show you how to size and wax. On this section of the size and wax, we're gonna go ahead and size up a ring. We're gonna size it up rather than down. Um, of course, the same thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure that you inspect your piece. You wanna make sure that your prongs are there, all prongs, this one has a lot of prongs, so we make sure that they're there, and the uh, shank is complete. And the uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the sprue off of this piece. Put it on here and see what size this is. So we're at a seven on this one. Okay, and we wanna go to a size nine and a half. So we're gonna go to our marker size and we're gonna find two and a half. Which is the number 10 on the marker size. And again, you're gonna wanna go directly at the, the bottom of the shank and make sure that you're cutting uh, the piece that you need. And for this, when we're adding, we're gonna use this wax and we're gonna add two and a half from this wax to this wax. So we're gonna need that. And we're gonna measure and make sure what our measurements are. We're at a 2.19 on this one and the thickness of it is a 1.69. So when you're adding a wax blank to it, we call it a wax blank. You can make these um, using a plain wedding band. Just make a mold of it and get yourself some injections. And uh, make sure you're using a little bit bigger than the wax you need. That way you can remove a little bit, but you, it's a little harder to add it on. So we're gonna measure this one and make sure that's what we need. This is a 2.72 by a 1.99, so this will work out perfect for us. So we're gonna cut this one in half because we will be adding. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that both sides of it are completely flush. That way when I add the, the wax plug or the blank, it's gonna match up really nice. So the next one is we're gonna go ahead and take our marker size and we're gonna cut out the section that we need to add to the wax. So now I know that I'm gonna cut this part, and then I'm gonna cut this part. The reason I flip that wax over is because this, this clippers, they're gonna give you a tapered, a little tapered effect on there, which is not what you want. So I want a flat on a flat. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this on my ring mandrel and I'm going to a nine and a half. And it is a lot to add. When we're sizing down, we basically just use one of these two waxes, but because we're going so big, we really wanna add the wax to it. So that's what we're gonna do. So you wanna make sure that your wax is there. And we're gonna line it up with the, the grooved mandrel. It's actually a step mandrel. And then we're gonna take our our blue wax, our injection wax, and we're gonna just fill in the edges. Once you've filled in your edges, you let it cool for a second, and then you can take it off the mandrel. Looks pretty good now. And be careful that you don't break it when you're taking it off. You just kind of work it off slow. Okay, now we have a size that's a nine and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in anything that I didn't get while it was on the mandrel. Working these little edges. And when you size it in wax, it's not unlike sizing in the, in the metal. Um, it's a little easier to size in wax, but basically it's the same principle. You're using your marker size and you're measuring and instead of solder, you're using wax, of course, but it's uh, very similar. All right, so we'll do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and inspect this piece and I'm gonna remove the inside of the excess and I'll use my inside file for that, the half round. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with the solvent and the felt stick. And we're working it back and forth. I want to get the scratches and the fall marks out. Okay, we're done with that. And now I'm going to come and I'm going to file the sides. Now, a lot of people have trouble filing on a wax because it, it has a tendency to want to dig into the sides of the wax. So another way you can do that is if you're comfortable with a with a, um, an exacto blade, then you just kind of remove the wax with that. And just be careful that you're not cutting too much off, but it does work a lot quicker. And right here we're going to remove our excess. Keep your fingers out of the way. And then we're going to come ahead and finish the rest with this. And the object of removing the excess is you want it to look like you didn't size it in the first place. So when you're done with it and you go to finish the piece, um, you'll never be able to tell that the ring was actually sized. And whatever work you don't get done in the wax can easily be done in the metal. So it would be best to leave a little excess in the wax and remove it in the metal than to remove too much of the wax and then now you have a piece overdone when they get it to the metal. Now I'm going to come to this uh, buff stick and we're just going to make sure we get in the rest of it. And I try to keep a finger behind the wax to have something for the wax to lay on. Otherwise, it's just going to start bending and flexing. And then you're going to end up with a cracked wax. And you'll have to start all over. This is about all I would do to it in the wax. We're going to leave just a little bit excess, and that way they can get to it. And then once we add our sprue back on, you'll never even know that you had that, that little excess. Now we're going to come back with the Q-tip and make sure that all of the texture has been removed. Tip and solvent. And that is a size in wax up. Oh.